North Carolina Representative Madison Cawthorn um, has found someone else to be angry at. Or is it the same people? I don't know. Either way, he's mad and his manhood is threatened. That's definitely the case. But what is he gonna do about it? Let's listen. I'm telling you, when I see the people that are in Washington, D.C., who are trying to insert their woke politics into our culture, trying to destroy Western civilization, trying to take all of our morality away from everyone, trying to make everyone genderless, sexless, and just absolutely godless, I realize that the American people are sick and tired of it. We want our country back. We want our culture back. And if you want to stand in the way of that, we will run you over. We will run you over. We want our, our culture back and we want our country back. Who is we again? Who is we and what culture are we talking about? He did say the Western culture, so who's not involved in the West culture? When people like him um, say, and, and Representative Former, Representative King, uh, say things like our culture, our Western culture, civilization, it means that everyone else is uncivilized, they don't have a culture. Um, and we have to steamroll them because they're dangerous. What does that sound like again? Uh, I know the denials will come, be like, no, we're not really saying all that. But the problem is, is it's kind of proven with how the response comes from that. So this violent rhetoric, which of course that clip ended with him saying, we're gonna run through you. Physically, proverbial, how exactly are you gonna run through people? We'll find out exactly because there have been recent polls that have shown this is resonating with the Republican base um, and how they think political violence is definitely the way they go. So from the Hill, the average American voter is what they had there. The average American voter believes that the US is two thirds of the way to the edge of civil war according to New Georgetown Institute of Politics and Public Service poll. The poll showed that when voters were asked to rate divisions in America on a scale to zero to 100, with 100 being, quote, the edge of a civil war, the mean response was 67.23. That is not good. Yeah, continuing on, more than half of Trump voters, 52% expressed support for leaving the country along political lines, according to a new poll from the University of Virginia Center for Politics. Huh, really also, they want us to see it again. Yeah, so there's 50, let's, let's recap with that. 52% of, of Trump voters wanna leave. Um, 67 is the mean of people, this isn't just Republican voters, but people that just believe that we're headed towards a civil war. Again, every time we bring up civil war, I'm always thinking, what does that look like? Either way it goes, I think they have an idea in their head and it just doesn't really work. But continuing on, a quote, back to normal barometer, a survey for the first time finds 61% of Americans agree with the concern that the US could be on the verge of another civil war. And additionally, 52% of consumers have also stockpiled food or essential goods in anticipation of social unrest being tied to a resurgence of COVID-19 in the coming months and or the election. So real quick, before we open this up, um, there's just a quick chart here about the people who were worried about a civil war. Again, this is amongst the whole country, not just necessarily Republicans who are having daydreams about it. But the question here is, how much do you agree with the following statement? I'm concerned that the US could be on the verge of a, another civil war. So the strongly agree, the darker purple is 40%. Somewhat, somewhat disagree and then strongly disagree is a whole that pie there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, All right, <laughs> are so we headed? Yeah, yeah. So look, Cawthorn and his like uh, are driving us towards there. Obviously, uh, any rational person does not want to go there. And so uh, let's talk about Cawthorn first. So uh, he said, then we're going to run you over. Now, if that was the first time he said it and he didn't clarify his political rhetoric, I wouldn't think that it was that big a deal. But this is actually now nearly half a dozen times he has insinuated violence, including references to the Second Amendment, which is clearly a reference to actual weapons and using weapons. And he has said that you should be wary of government tyranny and use the second amendment against it. That means murdering government officials. So when he says we, uh, the right wing should run over the left wing, basically uh, given that context, he is once again insinuating, we don't care about the law, we're just gonna come and hurt you. We're gonna physically endanger your lives. And it, and of course, uh, on January 6th, they brought that to fruition. Charlottesville, they brought that to fruition. The synagogue bombings, oh, these are all right wingers. The truck bomber in uh, Washington, D.C., the pipe bomber, all right wingers, all doing violence, all saying they're doing it for Trump and the Republicans. And we're whistling past the graveyard here. It's so obvious that they are driving the right wing into actual violence that is happening in the streets of America, and it only threatens to get worse. Now, on the other points that he made, I also would love if there's he ever does it with a real reporter, which is very unlikely because corporate mm -hmm. media would kiss his ass too. Right wing media obviously is on his side, and he would never come on a progressive show because he's a coward. Um, but if he uh, did, I would ask him a morality, 
do you support Donald Trump? He's gonna say yes. Donald Trump uh, was raw dog dogging mistresses while his wife was delivering. And they were porn stars. Are we talking about morality? Is that, are we talking about family values? Are the family values we're talking about? I can go on and on with it, dozens of Republicans who are the most immoral people, and we could prove it a thousand times over. Representative Desjardins, we talked about earlier in the show, he's a Republican congressman from Tennessee, had three abortions that he paid for, two with his wife, one with his mistress. Is Desjardins immoral, yes or no? Is he immoral, he's your goddamn colleague. He paid for abortions, he had a mistress. Is that family values, is that morality? Okay, you guys don't believe in morality at all, so take that word out of your mouth. And genderless sexist, okay guys, just be honest with us, okay? You hate gay people, you hate trans people, just say it. What does that mean? Oh No, no, I don't, but I think we should discriminate. They shouldn't have the same rights as us. They shouldn't go to the same bathrooms, they shouldn't be on the same high school teams. They shouldn't have the same rights. So now when we get to the foundation of Western civilization, does he <laughs> actually mean the tenants of Western civilization? Or does he just mean white people? Because the tenet of Western civilization is equality, equal rights for everyone. It's in our constitution and it is a core part of Western civilization. And you just said you don't want equality for trans folks, gay folks, by the way, earlier black folks. But okay, let the past go, ha ha, okay? <laughs> but right now, right now in that statement, you said you were against equality. That is actually the tenets of Western civilization. Basically, be honest, you're saying I don't care about Western civilization. All I care about is white people, and that goes to the point that JR made. That is what we care about. Well, who is we and who is they? And you're constantly attacking minorities because you think in racial terms. And then you project that onto the rest of the world. Can you believe Democrats are fighting back against us by talking about racism? How could they fight back against our ugly, ugly, vicious racism and homophobia and bigotry? You see how it's the Democrats fault. No, I don't see that. You're a coward, you don't believe in Western civilization. And you're dangerous because you're demagoguing people into violence, which of course you will not partake in like Trump. You will run, Trump said, oh, go, go into the Capitol, oh yeah. And then he ran like a little bitch back into his bunker <laughs> and watched it on TV. Ooh, they're fighting for me, they're killing cops for me, yeah. And that's the same thing Cawthorn will do. He ain't gonna do no Second Amendment rights. That guy's a coward as far as the eye can see, it's so obvious. All right, Fran. Jake, I mean, come on, how do I follow that? Jake is on one tonight. I didn't think he had any energy left after that Ro Khanna interview, but man, he's finding it, he's doing it, it's amazing. I, I love, thank you for breaking that all down. Sometimes we need someone to break down step by step the BS. I just feel bad, you know, like, that that casting agent way back when in the Gillette commercial that Cawthorn was going out for said, no, I don't think we want to like cast you in this role. And then he went into politics. He could have had a really robust career. We all knew he was gonna be like some kind of model, you know what I'm saying? And now he's building it. His brand off of sedition and like overthrowing democratic elections. So that's cool. Um, the other thing I was just gonna say is it is scary that we are that that mentally many people think that we're headed towards a civil war and the right is stockpiling guns. Of course, we know we can't even get gun control because we can't reform the filibuster, fun. Um, and then on the left too, I think a lot of people are like, look, it feels often like we're living in two different countries. It feels like we're, we are completely talking past each other, it feels like Somehow we are getting away with saying things like Western civilization, which by the way, is the same thing as critical race theory. It's just dressed up language to say you believe white people deserve more than people of color and equality scares you to death. But I do think that in the face of all that, you're like, what do we do? Do we, you know, is it, you know, making more robust like FBI units to go after white supremacy? I don't necessarily believe that, but I do think that they haven't been taking it seriously at all. Um, and I also think they haven't been taking it seriously for white supremacists in the ranks of police and and federal agents. We know that, right? We've seen those reports. Nothing happens. We don't get reform. The last thing I'll say though is. You need a vision. Trump, for as disgusting and apocalyptic and racist and xenophobic his vision was, was a vision. What are Democrats putting out there, right? We didn't get our Bernie Sanders vision, at least into the White House. It still exists. And what we have is Joe Biden and moderates who, even if they get something passed, and I'm not saying it's worth nothing. 
But there is no vision, there is no cohesive vision to say, no, our future is not civil war. Yes, our future is a multiracial democracy that does have equality and justice for all. Yes, we can be true to our constitution. Yes, we can move forward. We don't have to be tribal. Yeah, last thing I'll say here is, for God's sake, to, to follow up on Francesca's point, do some framing, do some branding, get out there and put out your own message. So flip the frame on Republicans. They want to talk about race because they want to trigger white fragility. Uh, white folks saying, "Oh no, don't call me racist, but we didn't call you racist. Teaching about slavery isn't calling you racist. Why are you taking it personally? But apparently in Virginia, we lost that battle. So why don't you flip the frame and say, why aren't Republicans for equality? Equality is something that is part of the American brand. It's, it's a core to our ideals, our principles. And it's hard to say no. I don't think gay people should be equal. I don't think black people should be. I don't think Mexicans should be equal. I don't think trans people should be equal. Let them make that case. But the Democrats mm -hmm. never effectively challenge them, challenge them on that. And finally, I'll channel Anna Kasparian here by saying, um, you could fend them off as we've discussed here on these issues. And they say, by the way, you ever notice how Cawthorn never talks about economic issues? Because he's for lower wages. And he's for making sure that you pay higher drug prices. That's why he's trying to distract you with squirrel, race, uh, trans mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. genderless, etc. Because he's robbing you and he wants you distracted during the robbery. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, we really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.